Okay, so changing gears and topics with Newsbud Spotlight, we're going to be talking about Sabrina De Souza, as she was recently featured in the Newsbud Report with Peter B. Collins. We've been following the case of former CIA officer Sabrina De Souza, one of 26 Americans convicted in Italy for the botched 2003 kidnapping of Abu Omar. De Souza is going to be extradited from Portugal to Italy any day now, and she faces a four-year prison term in Italy. She just sent a letter to President Obama about her plight and joins us now from Lisbon. Now, Sabrina, it's pretty clear that you were a low-level player in this plot, uh, the rendition of Abu Omar, and uh, you have advanced evidence that you were not even present in Milan on the day of the kidnap. Yet, uh, you are the first of the 25 who were convicted in absentia to face extradition and possible imprisonment. Do you feel that you're being scapegoated, that, that you are a scapegoat for the decisions of others that put this whole, uh, you know, plot into motion? Yes, uh, absolutely. In fact, uh, I'm not the only one who thinks that. Uh, I think at the end of April, uh, I don't know if you're aware, but Abu Omar, the uh, individual we rendered to Egypt, spoke out as, as a matter of fact, calling me a scapegoat and saying that senior officials had not been held accountable. So that, and, and I guess my speaking out all these years um, you know, against the rendition and that uh, exactly that, you know, the senior officials who had authorized this rendition uh, have not been held accountable. In, in Italy, all the Italians have been granted immunity, including those who directly participated in the rendition because state secrets covers uh, their involvement in it. So um, that's pretty much what it is. Like I said, uh, you know, when if you speak out, uh, you unfortunately face the consequences of speaking out. Now, D'Souza has made multiple attempts to clear her name and her alleged involvement in this rendition operation. Now, I understand, Sabelle Edmonds, you have had communications with this woman and have been in contact with her uh, in recent years. And we'd like to have a alternate perspective, a different perspective on what took place here with this rendition operation. Uh, sure. The, this is this is actually great that we are doing this. This is a great opportunity to um, show, illustrate our viewers what we have been talking about in reference to Boiling Frog's post and Newsbud, that we are one of the very few, if not the only news information website where we present a different varying views. Sometimes these views contradict themselves. And as far as political philosophies, we have people who are liberal leaning, we have people who are libertarian leaning. And, and despite our differences, we are able to work together, put out perspectives, even though those perspectives may challenge even our own team members. And I understand Peter has been doing a great job covering the story. And I like his method that he is keeping, you know, at it. And so it's not like a one-time coverage. He's kind of keeping the issue alive. But one of the things that I have noticed here is uh, it offers that perspective, uh, even though Peter is doing it objectively, uh, in that sympathetic uh, approach to the case. While some of us here at Boiling Frogs Post slash Newsbud, we don't have and we don't share that sympathetic views in regard to Sabrina de Sousa. And uh, I got to know her a little bit via several phone conversations in 2006, 2007, when nobody was really talking about this case. A lot of this case was kind of secret, hush-hush. Mainstream media didn't do much in terms of coverage, even though it was going through the whole court process. Uh, for example, you said she's trying to clear her name. And this woman is not even clearing her name when it comes to really CIA's illegal operation that were never officially sanctioned by Congress, as far as we know. Uh, CIA's violations of uh, international, even United Nations own human rights policies. I mean, we are talking about kidnapping, torturing, torturing, murdering people without showing any probable cause, without showing any warrants. And in many cases, as we have seen, many, many of the targets proved to be innocent people. Yet these people, they were 
kidnap, let's call it rendition, they were taken to, to some black sites, whether in Poland or in Turkey or Romania or, or anywhere, okay? And they've been tortured, and some of them have actually disappeared. And without any proof of their guilt, the real guilt establishing them as any kind of terrorist. So uh, this woman, this CIA operative, she was part of that illegal operation, operations against the human rights, and she got caught. So she's not saying what was taking place was horrendous. She was not expressing any regrets for what CIA was doing. What she's doing is she's sobbing and crying and saying, how come I'm going to go to jail for this? And all those other people, the other 25 people, they are not going to jail. And those bosses who ordered us to engage in this murdering, torturing, kidnapping operations, how come those bosses are not going to jail? Okay, that basically summarizes the case. Now, I have to agree, not only her, everybody else who were involved, who was involved in any way with these rendition torture, kidnapping, murder cases should be held accountable, you know, go to jail, dungeon, long for a long, long time. And that we agree with. I don't have any problem with that. As far as the bosses, whether it's Obama and other people in Congress and the heads of CIA who sanctioned these illegal operations in one way or another, in secret meetings with secret executive orders, all those people should be held accountable. But that does not translate into any sympathy being warranted for this woman. So I'm saying, yeah, she should go to dungeon and, and rot there. And every single one of those murderers, torturers, kidnappers should do the same thing. They should go to jail and rot, rot there. So as simple as that. And, and the explanation for that is very simple. This woman made a choice, conscious choice, to obtain a job with the CIA. And she was not a secretary typing as an operative, okay? And CIA for half a century been known as, as, a, as an entity organization that engaged in these kinds of horrific operations, whether it's false flag terrors or, or in this case since 9-11, openly admitting to the torturing and rendition and kidnapping, etc. She made a conscious choice to obtain that job and she's been working for them for two and a half decades, okay? Getting that paycheck, enjoying what she's doing and staying and remaining with this goddamn agency, okay? So that is known. That's one. Two, this woman continued working for the CIA while CIA was engaged in this kidnapping and torture since 9-11. Abu Omar was not the only person. They have been doing it with, with hundreds of other people, with CIA private planes going into these countries and engaging in these kidnappings and then black sites, torture, murder stuff. She had no problem. You know why I, I'm saying she had no problem with it, Spiro? Because she never blew the whistle. When those operations being illegal, not officially sanctioned, was going on, she, this woman never said, this is wrong, this is disgusting. I'm going to let the public know, or I'm going to resign. I'm going to get out of this. She remained with this agency, so she made a conscious choice. Very simple, isn't it? And, uh, and now, basically, she's saying that, well, the rest of them are going free, and they are, they are going to basically let me go and be the scapegoat. Okay, well, too bad. But that should not bring any special sympathy I understand it, it's a call for, for the public to say the rest of them should go and be convicted, hopefully, and go to jail as well. But as far as this woman goes, why would you give her sympathy? As far as if I was the judge, I would want her to rot there in jail as well. Now, D'Souza isn't directly being uh, accused of participating in the kidnapping itself. In fact, she claims she was out of the area when it took place. She's being uh, indicted and convicted for her involvement in manipulating documents that would uh, throw investigators off track. So what do you, I mean, what's the level of involvement here? Well, let's, let's look at our own court so-called justice system here. When uh, FBI, the courts, the prosecution, they bring cases against people 
who were involved in the case of a murder or racketeering or terrorism, they are not looking only at the masterminds. They are not looking at only at people who implemented. They are going after the people who were involved even in uh, facilitating financial arrangements for that. They are looking at people who maybe knew about it and didn't report it because, you know, within the law, you are supposed to be, if you come across some kind of criminal and you sit in that information, that implicates you. So anybody involved in this program whether there were people who were swooping the grounds where the blood was being shed of the people they were torturing and they didn't say anything, didn't, didn't do anything, they got payroll, they were on the payroll, they were getting their paychecks, they are involved. Another good analogy would be you have a court case of a mafia murder cases and you have a hitman there who has murdered four, tortured and murdered, you know, think of good fellas, okay, uh, Godfather, Once Upon a Time America. You know, all these movies. And they are out there, the hitmen, and they are facing trial. It's like the hitman saying, you know something? I didn't make that decision. I was not part of the decision making. The godfather, the boss, paid me and said, do it, so go after them. That's exactly, basically, what this woman is doing here. And, uh, and again, it doesn't deserve any sympathy. And I have really issues with that kind of statement. Or even portraying it as a case, as a victim. Some felt like that, and I'm sorry, I have to call her. And anybody within the CIA who knows about these kinds of illegal operations, and not only they don't blow the whistle, they don't resign, they actually participate in it, I would say I consider all of them filthy. It, it comes into some of these being conscientious, having a conscience, having some moral principles that says wrong is wrong, okay? Murder and torturing is wrong. Whether I'm working for the CIA or if I'm working for some godfather in Brooklyn, it is wrong. And people make choices when they go. Nobody forced her to do that. You kind of look at the situation of these pilots, the Air Force pilots, who resigned and they are now going around the country saying they would not go along with the orders of this using drone programs because they find it to be uh, despicable, uh, morally questionable, right? Right. What's the difference between these people, these guys and women, and 80% who are shrugging and saying, an order is an order, and we're going to do it, and we're going to participate in it. Are they responsible? Of course, you bet. And the same thing with this woman. She has no problem with those pro programs. She has never had any problem with those programs. And since these jerks who work for the CIA... They don't have the conscious or they are not conscientious people. So since they don't have moral sense and they don't have those kinds of preventive built-in innate stuff, maybe showing that some of these people like this woman, De Sosa, ends up in jail, maybe that would act as deterrence. Because nothing else is stopping them. They're continuing. They're grabbing their paycheck. They're implementing it. Maybe it would make them, maybe something good will come out of it. Maybe they will pause and say, you know what? I don't want to end up like her because CIA is going to desert me. And I'm going to be uh, the scapegoat. And they're going to put me in dungeon there. So maybe that would make them quit what they are doing. Since they don't have the dignity and the integrity and the moral principles and the conscience to prevent them. Maybe this would. So, yes, I hope she will rot in jail and she will be there for a long, long time. And I rest my case. Well, we've seen uh, before that just following orders is not an excuse. Uh, we've seen this through the Nuremberg trials. Uh, you're still guilty if you participate in any way. So I definitely would have to agree with you there. So that pretty much wraps it up for this episode of Spotlight with Newsbud. Uh, we were going to try to keep this episode short, but two very important topics uh, that we had to touch on and cover here today. We hope you enjoyed the show. Sabelle, would you have anything else you'd like to add here? No, uh, you're right. The topics actually deserve this longer episode, but also you have to consider the fact that you got me again into my in my talking mode, and so I, I talked and talked. So we're going to make up for it in the next episode, and we're going to have uh, Spiro do his usual to the point and uh, brief and exciting presentation, and we'll be having some really interesting topics that we are going to talk about in the coming soon-to-come episodes. 
That's right, and be, sh be sure to uh, follow and subscribe onto Boiling Frog's post. Uh, for now, that's going to be the temporary home for NewsBud, and you can find all that there as well as our uh, YouTube channel. Please check out our YouTube channel. All the links will be provided below. Till next time, this is Spiro and Sabelle for NewsBud Spotlight.